man is smelling the white truffle. And I remember you saying, Giorgio, last year, that should, the taste should stay with you, not just for a lifetime, but certainly those hours after and the smell. Yeah, the, and you know, the volatile compound should stay with you. The problem is that everybody's just eating like this white, white truffle oil. Oil. Then yeah. you know, the <laughs> volatile compounds count. disappear straight away, and then exactly. for six hours, every time you burp or digest, you remember. Oh, exactly. In the morning after, you go. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is gorgeous. Yeah. What a beautiful yeah, thing. Like we had a dinner. We had like had just truffle, and yeah. you know, the moment you come home and. It's all gone, you know, it's just, the idea is the volatile oh, compounds that you release. So beautiful. And, you know, it's a bit of a shame not to have anything that we can do hot here. Yeah, right, yeah, you know? I know. Which is always, you know, to, make, yes. to warm it up, then you increase that. Yes, yeah. about, we're going to get straight to it. Of course, I have my co-host with me, Suzanne Husseini, and the man is in the studio. He's already started preparing food. Mm -hmm. Locatelli, Giorgio, award-winning, welcome back to the show. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Lovely to be here. <laughs> the best way to land in Dubai is to come from the airport and come to see you. Oh, Fantastic. You. <laughs> and you've brought the truffle. I've already held it in my hand and yeah. smelt it. It's a goodie. Tell us about your white truffles. Uh, so this is a, a batch of white truffles, about two kilo of that. I brought it from... Uh, I actually, it came to London to me yesterday uh, from San Pietro Pettine. Uh, from our uh, sort of uh, dealer because yeah. those truffle Ooh. guys they call truffle dealer Dealers. because they're selling <laughs> something that's more magic than, than anything else and um, it's been a fantastic season in Italy this year so the price is reasonable you know by the like, last year at this time we we're going for 2,500 pounds a kilo we are half of that this year so it's wow. 1,250, 1,200 so that's very very good and what do you attribute that to? Uh, obviously, a good season the good season is, is, is a combination between the moon phase, the heating in the ground, the amount of water. Mm. So it was a very, very dry summer. Oh, sorry, it was very wide, uh, very wet summer. Mm. And then it got really, really dry in September. And then the moon came in and it started to rain. And so that's when the truffle... Because, you know, the truffle is always there. The yes. spores always go. Yes. Does he ripen and it becomes truffle that you can eat? Or it, it just doesn't. Or it dies. So, yeah. yeah, or it dies. Yeah. Yeah. So and that, that's that's the difference. So mm -hmm. and if they, you know, you must remember then the condition for making truffle must be perfect. You mm -hmm. know, I mm -hmm. always stress the fact that if you have a, a road going by, the truffle stop growing. If yeah. you have a, a high power line going by, even low flying, yeah, stop growing. Any type of stupid sure. little vibration or something, bang, the whole thing doesn't work. So you have to have this absolutely perfect. So it's, it's almost like it, it's like the woods tells you I'm very healthy. That's your truffle. Right. So that's it's uh, like not tampering with nature. Let nature do its thing. I mean, when you see them, the guys, who, the tartufaya, as mm. they call it, Italian, is this area that we know the truffle trees are there, so the spores are going to go around. So they're taking care of these things. The way that they do it is like this gorilla gardening because they dare and they take like a little bit of leaf from there to the other side. I saw them <laughs> digging this little channel to get a little bit more water for this little river and they were digging with the hands underneath of every little root. So, wow. so Talk us through what you're doing there. Well, the most you? important thing is always to, you know, when you do a carpaccio because you want it to be, to taste the meat. So very important, you know, when your dishes come out, the dishwasher, sometimes they do smell of the little tablets that you put in or whatever. So very, very important is to make sure that either you pass it with lemon, I add that little bit of olive oil and lemon. So I shake it, I put it down and then press it all over. So then I get this fantastic sort of smell of lemon on it. Oh, okay, that's okay. just on the plate. Okay, then yeah. another little trick is that when you season it, when you season it, meat, raw meat, what you're going to do, you're going to extract straight away some juices out of that. And it's going to go change the color straight away and sweat a little bit. So don't season it on top. Season the bottom of the plate and then you put the meat on top. Okay? So, <coughs> hold on a minute. I'll move that. Okay. Okay, so here you see I have a, I have a piece of meat Then I have beaten down to, uh, to the pulp in between two little sheets of paper, very thin paper. It's so fine, it. isn't it? That's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put it on top. 
off the plate till it matches it perfect. This is a dish that you can have prepared these all in the fridge before your friends arrive. So it's kind of like it's just the last minute putting it together, you know, and it's beautiful. 